Uh, last week, we began to delve into why, why we do what we do. Remember how we talked about how that one church would get up before they'd sing the doxology, and everybody would stand, turn to the right, at a blank wall, and sing. And they found out the reason why they did that was because a long time ago, they had the words painted on the wall. But eventually the words faded, but the tradition still remained for everybody turning and facing this one particular wall. Well, last week we looked at the topic, the Lord's Supper. Why do we have communion? So if you didn't hear that, I encourage you to go back, look at the website, look on Facebook, watch that uh, particular teaching of why we take communion. What's the reason for it? You know, if you don't know why you do what you do, there's really no power behind it. It's empty. Well, today we're going to continue looking at why we do what we do. We're going to look at what's called the second ordinance of the church. Baptism. Yep. Why do we baptize? What's the point? Who's the candidate? We've got several questions we're going to go over today. Why did I partic- pick this particular one? Well, next week, of course, we have our baptism service. If you're able to make it, we'd love you, all you to be out there. In Lake Lutherville. We're going to be meeting with sure faith. 11 o'clock is when we plan on starting. Bring a side dish because afterwards we're going to celebrate those that God has added to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. 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 Make sure you bring a chair as well because seating is limited. If you're still wondering or wanting to be baptized, talk with me after church today. If you're online, I believe God to talk with you as well. So, baptism. What is baptism? What is its purpose? Today we're going to be looking at several scriptures because how many know you need to know why you do what you're doing based off of scripture. This is the word of God. This is what we build our faith on. This is what we we get our faith and practice. If it's not built on the word of God, it's an empty ground. So, what is baptism? The water baptism is a ceremony that symbolizes a new life. It is a public declaration that we are saying no to sin, but yes, yes to yes. Jesus. Let's look at Romans 6, 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We are buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ is raised with the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. When we go under, it is a picture of this. We are being baptized into Jesus. We are entering into the grave saying, no, we are now dead to our old sinful selves, the old sinful desires that we want, the old sinful relationships that we had. We're saying no to that. It's no longer going to have a hold on us. And as we're coming up, we are declaring to everyone we are now alive in Christ. We are now going to base our choices on what Jesus said. We're now going to live our life based on what Jesus said. We're going to allow him to be the Lord of our lives. He's going to be the ruler of our lives. It is a picture of what is happening in us. Peter compared baptism to Noah and the flood in 1 Peter. Let's look at that verse. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What in the world does that mean? What does that mean? Peter is saying it is a picture. Baptism is a picture of the way that God saved Noah. So allow me to explain. Give me a few minutes, okay? Faith in God is what Noah had, right? Yes. Because God told Noah, hey, it's going to rain. And there hadn't been rain before. And so he had to take 100 years to build this ark, experience the ridicule, but because God said so, he did it. 
One day, what happened? The heavens opened. The flood. 40 days and 40 nights. And judgment was poured upon the earth because of the wickedness of man, is the way the Bible says it. God had to wipe the strip slate clean. There was a judgment placed on the earth. But because of Noah's faith in God, he rested inside the ark, and the ark carried him along safely, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, how is that a picture of bad faith? Who do we put our faith in? God. Our faith is in God just as well, right? Now, the judgment is now could be placed upon us. It could have been placed upon Noah back there in the flood because he rested inside the ark. He made it safe. Now, the judgment could be placed upon us, but instead we are now what? We are in Christ. Has everybody seen that? So we are in Christ. Now, the judgment was placed upon Christ. It was rained down upon Christ so that we no longer have to face the judgment. We are now able to rest in Jesus. We no longer have to worry about God's judgment being poured out upon us if we have faith in God through Christ. The ark experienced the judgment of God as what was being judged. Christ experienced the judgment that we, that was really spoke for us. He experienced, so now we're safe inside him. Baptism is a declaration of that, is what Peter is saying. Jesus has provided for our safety. Now, one of the common misconceptions of teachings out there sometimes is that salvation is necessary for salvation. Some people say you have to believe and be baptized to be saved. There are a few verses that say that, but they take that out of context. Salvation is not through baptism. It's not. There's no way you can be saved just because you were baptized. Well, I was baptized when I was an infant, so I'm saying, no, you're not. That is not what the Bible teaches. I'm sorry. I don't mean to step on your toe, but it's not a requirement for salvation. If it was, then what about the, the guy who hung on the cross where he was dying, and Jesus looked at him and said, today you will be with me in, in paradise. As he died on the cross, do you think he climbed down and got baptized? No. No. It is not a requirement. <laughs> However, it is a declaration that you are saved. Yes. Yes. It is a declaration. Yes. Yeah, it's a testimony. That's a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. For example, here, here's an analogy. Whenever a couple gets together <clears throat> and they go to the court or justice of a peace to fill out a marriage license, and then they have to go through and they've got signs on it. You guys are legally married. You are married now. But yet they still want to have a wedding to symbolize that they're getting married. Was that wedding necessary for them to be married? No. No. The marriage license is what was necessary for them to be married, correct? Yes. The wedding was just a public announcement saying, hey, I give myself to her. Or, hey, I gave, my, I gave myself to him. You know what? <laughs> It's a public declaration yes. that these two have made a covenant. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is the exact same way that yes. baptism yes. is. You have made a covenant with God. You are sealed through the blood of Jesus Christ. You are one with him. Amen. The baptism is the public declaration. Let everybody know. Yes. Right. I am now my God. I am now living for him. I am no longer going to be attracted to the things of old. Right? It works perfectly like that. So baptism is a public, everybody say public. Public, public outward expression yes. of what's happening on the inside. Amen. Amen. That's what baptism is. That is what baptism is. So who is a candidate for baptism? Well, since it's a sign of repentance, since it's a sign of declaring, I am now in covenant with God, it is for believers yes. only. 
Baptism was only designed for those who were saying to everybody else, I am now following Jesus with all yes. my heart, and I am turning my back on everything else. Jesus is what really matters to me. Jesus commanded for his disciples to be baptized. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What came first? Them becoming disciples. Then baptism. Notice it wasn't baptism made them disciples. They became disciples, then they were baptized. Mark 16, 15 and 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. After you believe, be baptized. After you believe, yes. be baptized. You are letting everybody know. You're letting the devil know you are off the market. Jesus has put a ring on your finger. You are now his. Amen. 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 It also follows the pattern we see throughout Acts. Acts 2.38. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Both men and women, even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip, and seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Notice, believe, be baptized. Acts 16, 31 through 34. And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Yes. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all those who were in the house. And he took them to the same hour of the night and washed their wounds and he was baptized at once. He and all his family. Then he brought them up to the house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with the entire household that he had believed in God. Amen. Believe, baptize. Amen. Baptism is for believers only. only. So only a believer should be baptized in order to declare that he or she is a follower of Christ. Yes. Let's look at another question. So far we talked about why baptism. We talked about who should be baptized. But why in the world do they have to dunk you? Is sprinkling okay? Is putting a little a cold cough on you okay? Well, not if you're really going to be baptized. Baptized. Immersion is the closest picture to what we read in Romans 6. You are buried right. to sin. In other words, you're dead to it. And you have risen to life in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's the closest thing to yes. it. When you go under, it's like you're being clothed in death. And you come up and raised to life. Amen. It's the closest picture. But also the word itself. The word itself for baptized is baptizo. Baptizo. It means to dip under or immerse. Baptizo. Other passages that illustrate that it was, it was used by immersion is John 3, 23. John also was baptizing at Aeon near Samuel because water was plentiful there. Yes. Why would there need to be plenty of water if it was just someone to grab a cup and throw it on you? There had to be enough water to go down yes. and up. Okay? Or even Mark 1.10. And when he came up out of the water, he had to come up out of it. Another picture to show that it was the biblical model is immersion. Or Acts. 8, 35 through 39. Then Philip opened his mouth and began with the scriptures. He told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came up to some water, and the eunuch yeah. said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both what? Went yeah. down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went away rejoicing. These are just a few of the scriptures that show that the biblical model for baptism is immersion. And it's only, only, only available to those 
who are being married to Christ. You are the bride of Christ. Your baptism is a picture like a wedding. You're telling the enemy you're off the market. You are dead to that old way of living, to the old lies that the Satan used to tell you, and that your only yes. love in life is going to be Jesus. Amen. Yes. So baptism is a public ceremony where you're letting everyone know that you made a change. You have made a change. So just like a wedding, if you're deciding to be baptized, invite people. It is a celebration. Yes. Let as many people know what Jesus is doing in your life. And that you are his and he is yours. That's right. Be obedient to his example. So I encourage you, if you have not been baptized, and you're wanting to make that public declaration, let us know. Next week, you have an opportunity. There was one from Shield of Faith that wasn't going to be able to be there next week, so she asked if they could make a special session. They went and baptized her just the other day Aww. at Lake Frugalville. That's it is awesome. cool. It is, it, is, it is something. Next week is going to be, it will be an awesome opportunity if you haven't done that before. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we absolutely love you. And Jesus, we want the world to know that we're yours and you are ours. We thank you for the ceremony of baptism that you put into place as a sign. We thank you, God, that we now understand why we do it. That it's not just something we do because we want to or because it's been passed down. We do it because it's actually a declaration of what you've done in us and what our relationship signifies. We love you, God. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.